Rock 96.7, it's Styles with Jake from Citizen Soldier tonight over at the Castle Theater. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking about this. The last time you guys were there was out with Royal Bliss. At that time, you had the collab through Hell. And now you're back on an acoustic run. So let's start there. What made you or what kind of was the idea to go out and do an acoustic tour? You know, it's it's funny. At first, the idea started out of convenience. We are recording our next record right now in Nashville. We talked about, man, this this producer has to take some days away from us to mix this record. We might as well play some shows while we're out there. But, you know, having all of our gear with us would have been a lot of work. And we thought, you know, why not do something acoustic? And this is something that fans have been asking for for a long time, because those who know have known us from the beginning, some of our most popular songs are ballads, you know, piano only ballads, acoustic songs. And so that's something that we've never done on a scale like this. Just give the fans an opportunity to hear songs that are more stripped down. So we're taking some songs that are heavier and stripping them down and we're playing some ballads as they were originally intended to be heard and um, giving people a chance to hear songs that we've never been able to perform live before. So we're excited. And taking the songs, stripping them down, especially the heavier ones, what was that like sitting back and having to actually do that? You know, when you write good songs, it's a lot easier to do. And I say that as someone who's written a lot of bad songs. I think um, as a songwriter, I think a trap that it's really easy to fall into is you get too sucked into the instrumental and you just want to do something really heavy and cool and big guitars. But um, if the if if the song isn't if the lyrics and the melody aren't something that you can take and strip down and, and make a ballad and still have it feel great and emotional and impactful, then it's not a great song, you know. And so um, that's something that I think you know we've made made sure to pick songs that are big and heavy, maybe arena rock anthems, but stripped down they still have that impact and maybe they even have more of an impact. You know, maybe they're, they're more emotional that way. And some of those songs are turning out to be just like that. Well, fantastic there. How many songs are we getting in a set for this show? Oh man. Um, I, I wish I knew <laughs> I, my, my memory and my, my attention to detail is not the sharpest. I think we're playing around 12, okay. uh, give or take some nights we'll throw an extra one in we're playing a few for our vips that we don't play in the set for everybody else so we're doing quite a few and during that vip which i know here in bloomington is sold out i was seeing a thing that you guys are playing for them this thing called bottom of the ocean which only they get to hear tell me about this song yeah you know what's crazy about um the internet now and TikTok and the way things work is a lot of artists will tease song ideas online and then something will go viral and they're like, okay, this is the next song we're releasing. So we do a lot of just teasing ideas. And um, that's an idea that we teased once and got a really great response on. And it's just been kind of sitting in our demo folder. And we have so many unreleased songs and we were thinking, you know, what's something special we can give to our VIPs that nobody else is, is getting. And we thought that giving them a chance to hear an unreleased, unrecorded song would be, um, you know, something that, would make it an experience that they'll never forget. So we're really excited to play it for them. People who have heard it so far have really loved it. Is there a chance of that ever getting released, like say down the road? There, there's definitely a chance. It's hard because, I mean, the fans always say, you know, just release everything. And it's <laughs> like, we, we don't have enough days in the year. You know, it's like for every good song you put out, you wrote 10 songs that you didn't think were as strong, you know? So it's tricky because you're fighting this desire to put a lot of songs out there and just take some chances. And and sometimes things do well that you wouldn't have expected. But on the other side of that coin, you also want to give people enough time to get excited about a song, to give it its true time in the spotlight so it can be successful. So it's tough. It's tough. And it just depends on the situation. But if we get enough interest, we will absolutely do it because we're doing it all for them. So if they want it, it'll happen. And you talked about releasing songs and even there a few minutes ago, uh, talking about working on that new record, but you've been dropping some songs through the last few months. The most recent here, Give Up to Ghost, and you have that album ICU, which um, if I'm not mistaken in my count, and I'm not great with math, but uh, 11 so far have dropped from that record. What is this all leading up to? Are we going to get the full album or are you just dropping it song by song? So we kind of do it backwards where, you know, maybe 10 years ago, a band does two or three lead singles and they drop a record. The hard part is making a record is expensive. And if you don't give each song an opportunity to be a single, it really hurts your return on that investment. So we've kind of flipped the script where we try to release 
most of the record as singles, and then maybe you bundle four to five songs together at the end of the record so that people are still excited about hearing those and the album drop still means something. So with ICU, <laughs> that's our biggest record ever. We have 18 songs on it. So fans are going to get a release next month in November, and um, they're going to get to hear five or six songs that we haven't released yet. And we also have multiple bonus tracks that we're going to sprinkle in towards the end of the year. So there's a lot of content coming for the holiday season. Wow. So 18 plus a couple bonus tracks. Correct. <laughs> and are you doing physical releases with this as well outside of the digital? We are. We're doing a physical release. We're doing something we've never done, which is a deluxe edition. So there will be songs on the deluxe edition and some extra content that people don't get on the original. And part of that's part of the reason why this record we're doing right now in Nashville, it's going to be 10 songs. It's the shortest record we've ever done, but ICU kind of, we ran out of gas <laughs> after that one. It's just like, man, that was a lot. Let's, let's really just try to, you know, keep this next one brief. So we hope people enjoy it. Yeah, no doubt. That's a lot of work and a lot of, uh, a lot of songs to release, but as you said, your fans are certainly enjoying it. Looking forward to the next record when that one is done. I want to talk about here tonight with, uh, the castle theater. You know, when you were here with, uh, Royal bliss, one of the things that truly stuck with me, about you guys is your fans and how loyal they are to you. Uh, I, I talked to one family that drove down from Michigan for that one. They're excited to see you. They follow you passionately. What's one of the common threads you see in talking with them? I think, you know, I, I talk about it every show as much as like people will say your song changed my life or saved my life. But songs can accomplish a lot, but there's no replacement for human connection. Um, and I think that fans come to our shows and it's like, you're pulling people together that have been through similar traumas and similar challenges and struggles. And they've been stigmatized in similar ways. And, and they've maybe shared different types of pain that before they had never met somebody who had been through something like them. And so I think our concerts are not only an opportunity to hear a song that made them feel seen and accepted, but they're also getting to connect with other people from from where they live or close by that could become lifelong friends. You know, they're building a community because the, the best form of suicide prevention is connection. And that's what this band has always been about. Um, and I think that what's exciting about our shows is every time we go, there's more people, pe people are building friendships and connections. And it's just like, you know, bands always say it and it's so cliche and you kind of roll your eyes, but it's like, we're a family. That's kind of what it is. You know, it's, it's building a family because a lot of these people have been disowned by their families or traumatized by members of their family. You know, people who love our music have typically been through a lot. So to give them a place where they can feel safe and seen and accepted, it's special. It's more than just a rock band that writes great songs. And we, we think that it has a lot of potential to grow. You talk about that family appeal to the band. Another part that struck me was the time you spent with those fans. Um, there was such a line to just speak with you throughout the show after you actually gotten off the stage. I was stand there as your photographer for most of it, but you took such time to stand there and talk with each individual and you didn't like, oh, I got to get to the next person. You you took that time. And it's so impressive to see an artist, no matter at what level, to actually do that. And you really take that time for them. Now, I'm just connecting the dots that you were that person. Thank you so much for doing that. And I'll say that was super kind of you to, to be willing to do that. Um, you know, it's funny. People always say that. They're like, oh, my gosh, you're so kind and selfless to do this. And I'm like, I feel like I'm being selfish. Like, this is the funnest part for me. This is the part I enjoy the most. Like you can release songs and you can hyper focus on the numbers until you go mad <laughs> online. You know, it's just maddening, but like to actually get in front of real people um, from all over the country that connect with your art and to be able to just talk to them and, and build relationships with them. Like I love that. I live for that. And it's kind of hard because as we grow, it's becoming more and more of a challenge with me, you know, talking for two hours after the show is not great for my voice. Um, and it's, it's going to get trickier and trickier to try and maintain that, but it's just part of who we are that we don't want to lose. You know, we want to make sure that people feel safe talking to us and approaching us and that we can still keep that connection. So it's going to be a tricky challenge moving forward, but we're going to try to figure out how to keep it alive. Well, and those VIPs are certainly something that you can do. And I think it's really cool that you're doing that with those special acoustics. And in this instance, giving, giving the fans an, like a song that is a demo that no one's going to be able to hear that you're performing live for them. I think that's a really cool, special little treat for them. 
Well, you know what's funny is I swore I would never do a VIP because I've I just I've been to one as a fan and I feel like they can be so dehumanizing. It's like just, just like paying to be in someone's presence or shake their hand. Like I, I just like there's something gross about that to me. Like it just kind of like creates this like um, tier of humanity. Like I, I'm I'm above you and you have to pay to to interact with me. And, and I get that like people's time is valuable, right? Like their time is valuable, but uh, with the VIP, we've been very deliberate about if we're going to do this and we've kind of been told by our booking agent and other people, like you're going to have to go this direction. Like it's not sustainable, but if we're going to do this, we are going to give people the best value of any band doing this. You know, a lot of bands charge more than we do just to take a picture and meet them for a few minutes. We do an acoustic performance. that's private. We play them songs that haven't been released yet over the speakers. We play them unreleased songs live. We talk to them. We take all the pictures. We sign all the things. We just want to make sure that they leave that experience saying like, oh my gosh, nobody is giving more in their VIP experience experiences in this band. So we're, we're very careful to make sure that they're getting everything they pay for and deserve. Absolutely. And that's what makes you guys so special to your fans. Jake, I appreciate the time, man. Looking forward to tonight. Thanks, man. Appreciate you.